people know we're not all doing decoys. Some do other birds. This is a hummingbird. It's a Costa hummingbird. No, this one here is, I'm sorry, it's an anise. And Costa's <coughs> here. And, uh, and a trumpet vine. Uh, this is something I might. Some of these birds, uh, hummingbirds, that are not from around here. You know, around here we only have the ruby throated. But down <laughs> in the uh, Arizona, Texas, New Mexico area, you've got about 20 some hummingbirds. Possible. That cross the border occasionally. <laughs> So this is uh, one of those. Anna's is out, goes out in California and up the west coast a bit. Uh, so uh, this gives you an idea of other ways of doing birds and displaying in nature. Uh, the uh, wood is, okay, I think this part is uh, just uh, Yeah, maybe too blow. The flowers are too blow. The bird is too blow. Brass is used for smaller branches here, but just carve it out. It so it gives you an idea of doing something different than big decoys of ducks. So <laughs> anyway, yeah. The fact that I've got a second hummingbird is going to be into. I'm doing about four hummingbird uh, varieties at this time, and this is one I'm in the process of painting at the time. At this time. So gives you another idea. Of yes, I doing birds. You selling all those in Rochester? Those I'm planning on taking down to Arizona. Oh. Uh, I've got a contact down there that's uh, in uh, Green Valley and has contacts with uh, art uh, places in Tubac, Arizona. So uh, that's why, I'll, because they belong in Arizona, I'll take them down there so people can know what they, they are. So you're leaving us for the winter? No, no. I, basically, I stick around. I like winter. There's all kinds of concerts and other things to go to get to a point where things get messy around here. You know, it starts getting dirty and sloppy. That's when I go to Arizona <laughs> until it warms up and I can feel like, hey, spring is going to come back. So it's, I go down there uh, generally in uh, March, day April. hand pheasant I've ever done. The uh, head's out of Tupelo, the body is out of white cedar, part of the tail is out of PVC pipe, and uh, I had a lot more detail on this bird, but I didn't like the total range of it, so I started doing a lot of washes, and I lost all my detail. Hmm. Then I started looking at all them little brown spots, I thought, do I want to go this all over all those and that sat there for about two weeks I thought well I better do something so I did put a little detail back on but um, this is a pair that's going to be sitting on a table that's why they're posed the way they are this tail sits right on the, the table and then uh, her little friend <coughs> So the rooster is all white cedar, uh, again with maybe five or six inches of PVC pipe in the tail. Uh, maybe only five and a half, who knows. But anyway, again, it's a pose that sits on the table. And this lady uh, wanted um, a fall waddle. You know, in the springtime, they get real big. 
but she didn't want that. So um, both of these are uh, painted in oils. And um, if you don't like this pattern, <laughs> no, this is uh, when we had those World Champion Carving Day. Don gave me a hand uh, developing this pattern uh, because you don't find many roosters sitting. All the pictures you get off the internet, they're all running or standing or, you know. Nobody sits down. Yeah. Under the bus. Oh, yeah. And, you know, the only reason I did these birds is I wanted to be like that. <laughs> so I brought down a scalp decoy. Uh, as he sits in my office, his bill keeps turning bluer and bluer. <laughs> <laughs> I swear it was more gray two months ago, but it's huh. turning blue as it sits there. <coughs> um, I purposely didn't put a keel on it because I didn't want Abby to shoot it. So I figured as soon as I put a keel on it, I put it in the water. <laughs> and then she's pretty good at strafing decoys, so I <coughs> figure, figure better uh, leave it out for at least a year, let it sit until from there so uh, it's the first low head duck I've ever done so that was a little bit of a challenge uh, Bob tailed it cedar uh, all cedar hollowed uh, red cedar baseboard and painted in acrylics did you do texturing on that uh, yeah I carved the texture back in the so what kind of texturing molding piece or so on the back the vermiculation is molding paste and comb. Yeah. And then the body is um, all cut back in. So after after I shaped it out, it did texture. I used a rasp to texture the head, and then uh, a hook knife to texture the body. Well, you know the greenish tint to the head on Lake Minnetonka before it started freezing up. I'm almost positive I saw one small flock of greater scops because they were really big birds. Yeah. But I was in the car and I couldn't stop and <coughs> look at them. But then I seen them coming back later on. And, uh, you know, don't see them very often, but I didn't money they were because they were too big to be bluebills. Yeah, and I kind of hedged back and forth on whether to do the more green shade or the purple shade head. And I told Allie that if I was bringing her down here and paying for her dinner, she had to do show and tell. So <laughs> <laughs> Abby's going to come up with her as moral support. Moral support. <laughs> Who's going to go first? <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, um, me and her carved these buffalo heads last year in Dave's class with Dave and their corn and cedar. What kind of paint do you have on me? What? What kind of paint?